Okay, part four of the tool cabinet build. We're getting the tools in the tool cabinet and we have dovetails to do, lots of dovetails. So let's jump in. What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now like I said, we're on to part four of the hand tool cabinet build. So in this episode, we're gonna start mounting the tools into the cabinet. I've already made a little start on it, so I'll show you what, exactly what I'm doing. And we have seven drawers to make with true dovetails in all the drawers. So this is gonna be a great one to practice some dovetails with. Like I said, we have seven to make. So I have cut all the components. They're all sitting in each of the drawer slots there now. So it's gonna be sapili fronts on a wall and it's made from one continuous piece of sapili. So the grain should match the whole way along. At least that's the theory anyway. We'll see how that goes. If we don't make any mistakes, all should work out well. So let's jump in. I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm mounting my squares at the minute. So I'm using up every single bit of scrap wood that I have and I have plenty of scrap offcuts around the shop. So we're gonna use all the scrap little offcuts of hardwood that we have to mount our tools. So let's jump in. Okay guys, so this section, like I told you before, this is going to be my marking and measuring section. So all my marking and measuring tools are all going to sit here. Now I've just started getting in some of my squares. Very, very simple. I'm using off cuts of walnut, putting a little slot in them. So the square just slots straight into it, just like that, and hangs. So nice and simple. The only downside to this um, design is that you need the room at the back of the square to be able to lift it out. So that's why the squares are turning towards each other each time. So we need just enough room to take them out and that should be good. But it takes up the same amount of space as if you nest all your squares. So that's the way I'm doing it. Now, let's get on. I need to make the next one for my combination square. So I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. So that's gonna sit right in the mix somewhere about there. So let's get this guy up. Okay, so mounting my squares then, I have a bunch of these little walnut blocks left over from a couple of projects. So they're just over an inch in thickness. So I said, why not use these up? Like I say, I'm trying to use up all my scrap wood. So this couldn't be easier. They just sit on the block like that. And we cut a slot out of the center of it, the width of our ruler. And that just sits straight into it. And the depth of our slot is the width of the ruler this way. So let's get on and do that. Now there's somebody with a chainsaw behind me. So if you hear him in this video, that's what's happening. So take this to the band. So cut a slot out of it and then we're going to put a nice little decorative chamfer on the edges, two screws with two countersunk heads and we'll screw it up and then we can remove them and we can put some finish on all these when we have everything in place. So let's get on and do it. Okay, nothing to do now and you just put it in place. Now, the thing about combination squares is no matter what way you put them in, you're always going to have to adjust them to put them back in, whether you let them sit flat or whatever. Um, there is no ideal way of putting in a combination square. So. It's roughly going to sit there. I think that's good. So a couple of nice brass screws. Make sure we're happy that we're level. Everything is nice and in line. Looks pleasing to the eye. That's the most important thing. That looks pretty good. Another screw there. So I'll be taking all these back off again just to give them a little sand up and uh, to put some finish on them. But there we go. So just like that, when we want it, slot it out, take it off. Just like that. Okay, next up I'm cutting a block for the sliding bevel. Now the sliding bevel is another one of those tools that you have to put it away the way you took it out. So when you use it, you'll have to set it back up and hang it again. So that's just the way it is. But uh, I have an angle set on this piece of wood that matches the angle I have on a sliding bevel and that'll just hang on that nice and easy. So. A little bit awkward, but we have it clamped to the shooting board. And like I say, I'm using scrap bits that I'm finding in my scrap bin. There we go. Lovely stuff. So now what we do is we want to hang that on that just like that. So what I think we'll do is we might put a little rebate inside in this and that will sit down into that. So let's mark it up. Okay, so I just want to get a little rebate into this. So go down a couple of mil there. Down a couple of mil there and line them up. Ha <laughs> 
That should do. Okay, there we go. Nice and simple, just an angle piece with a rebate in it, and that will slot in just like that. Holds it in place so it's not going to fall off. Not that there's any movement in the door or anything, it does not, it's just when you're opening and closing it. But uh, yeah, another just a little off cut timber, nice and simple. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, it's just a place to hang our tools. And uh, so let's get this one screwed in place. Okay, guys, so we have most of our squares in now. So I have my speed square up in the top corner here. Again, just a little rebate in the top of the block for the speed square to sit down into it, holds it nicely there. A nice little chamfer edge on it again, just a decorative detail. Again, my protractor sits nicely there, a little decorative detail around that, and the same around the uh, sliding bevel. So that has a little uh, rebate you saw me put in. It sits nicely into that and holds it nicely in place. And again, nice little 45 degree chamfer all the way around the edge on all these pieces. So that's kind of all the squares in place now. So they're all sitting in and are nicely held. So yeah, it's nice and tidy, not much to it now. I have a couple of um, dividers I want to put up there. So I've drilled two 12 mil holes. I have two 12 mil walnut dowels that I'm going to put in there just like that with a little bit of uh, wood glue and nice and simple. Not much more to it than just hang them there like that. So here we go. Okay guys, there we go, that's the marking section done. That's all my marking tools up now. We still have a bit of space to add some more. So nice little angled blocks I just made. I had a couple of angled off cuts there, which were just perfect. So I just drilled a hole down through them and uh, put a little chamfer on them, put a screw in them. And they are ideal now for the two marking gauges, just to slot in there at a nice angle. Another little block then just for my marking knife that just sits in there perfectly. And then I just put an angled cut on the back of a block to tilt it up the way just to hang my two uh, dovetail markers and they just hang nicely like that so just nice simple uh, little designs nothing to it really we're just hanging up some tools and uh, like i say we'll take all these blocks back off again i need to give them a sand then i'll hit them with some danish oil and uh, they'll look nice there now so that's kind of the marking section finished now we are going to get on to our chisels and rasps and mallets let's do that Okay, so guys, over this side then, this is where all my chisels and rasps and trying to get my mallets in here now as well. So I have a nice piece of sapili here. Again, this was a leftover piece. It's got a real busy grain pattern in it, so it's almost impossible to play in this because the grain is just going everywhere. No matter what way you run the plane on this, you get tear out, but we'll use it for uh, holding our chisels. So the plan is, is to put that just in there like that. And it's perfectly long enough to allow my mallet to sit there. So that's my carving mallet that I use with my chisels. That's going to sit there. We're going to make a nice little base for that to sit into. And then I'm going to hang my Ashley Oils chisels from this. So we have five of them to go in. And we'll have space for another five if I ever get around to getting the five uh, dedicated dovetail chisels by Ashley Oils. They'll all sit in there as well. So this one's going to be nice and simple. I've got to put a nice plane on the edge of this. We have to drill a mul multiple holes in this and then just cut them out so that we can lift out our chisels. So nice and simple. Let's get on it. Okay, let's start drilling. Okay guys, our holes are all drilled out and I just took it to the bandsaw and slotted all the holes as well. So the slots are actually four mil um, smaller than the holes. So the slots are 16 mil, the holes are 20 mil. And that allows me to slide the chisel in. So this, just behind the blade of the chisel, it starts to narrow just before the handle and that will fit in here. And then the brass ferrule will sit into the 20 mil hole. So that just allows you to, you don't have to drill a one inch hole or bigger. So any size chisel with that size stem will uh, slot in there and sit in there. So all the chisels will just slot in and sit in nicely like that. So there we go, that's that. So we'll just put a little decorative edge on this as well and we'll get this screwed into the cabinet. Just chamfer this edge. Ooh, 
Now, should I have done this before I cut the slots? Yes, absolutely. But uh, it's still gonna work, although it's gonna sound horrible. guys there we go there's our chisel holder just about done a little bit of sanding and a little bit of finish on that it's going to be perfect so we've nice decorative edge around every one of our little blocks there now which is nice i apologize if that hurt your ears it was quite squeaky it was like a colony of seals they are uh, putting the chamfered edges on them so if it's any consolation it hurt my ears as well so let's get this into the cabinet and like i said we'll pull it back off i'll sand it and get a finish on it but i'll get all that done off camera because i don't want to bore you guys with it so let's get, let's get this in now Okay, here we go guys, there's our chisel holder. So I actually have six chisels in this set, so that leaves me room for four more should I decide to get them. And it's a nice little gap at the end for the mallet that I use with my chisels. So that sits perfectly there. Again, this was just an off cut of um, Sapiti that I had. It just happened to be that length. So that's what we're going with. Like I say, I'm using up all my off cuts. So it's nice and easy, 20 mil hole with a 16 mil slot. You can lift up your chisels and just drop them in and hold them by their ferrule. So there we go. Now. Let's crack on. We have more chisels, rasps and hammers and mallets and everything to get into this cabinet yet. So let's crack on and do it. Okay guys, so very quickly, here's our chisel and mallet holder now. So you've seen me make this one. I just made another one the exact same again from off cuts of Sapili that I had lying around the shop. So again, we've done the same for the hammers, nice and simple, drill it with a forcing a bit and just cut out a bit and then we can clip everything in place. I have a nice little piece of a sapili here where I drilled a hole in it, the same diameter as my mallet. So that now sits in here. I've added a little dowel to the bottom of each door just so I can use this as a shelf. It'll hold things in. Now I could have put a solid piece there, but I didn't for the simple reason. I'm usually going around with pockets full of screws and stuff, and I'm always looking for some place to dump them. So what would inevitably happen, I would start just throwing stuff in there and that would get filled up with rubbish. So I have a dowel here now to force myself not to put rubbish in here because anything I do that's too small will just fall out. So that'll keep that nice and clean. And we can leave things like, um, our honing guides and stuff can sit there like that and they don't fall out. So little objects like that can sit in there and we're not going to dump a heap of screws and rubbish in the bottom of this if it was a shelf with a, a solid front on it if you get what I mean so that's that let's have a look at the rest of it all right very quickly over to my marking and measuring section so that's all done now again I just sanded the little pieces hit them with a bit of Danish oil just to put a finish on them so everything is in place and again just another little uh, walnut dowel at the bottom so I can leave my measuring tapes and stuff sit in there nice and easy or a few other bits and bobs again without dumping it full of screws and stuff that's why the dowel is there so we have marking gauges or dovetail markers the various different squares and stuff like that nice little place for our knife and I've added a few more of these Shiwa rulers I really like these got them from workshop heaven they're really clear to and easy to use that's why I like the markings on them compared to the rulers that are beside them these ones are a lot harder to read but these ones are good and clear it's a good color to have and they're pickup rulers as well so they have a little tab on them that you can just uh, make it easier to pick them off the bench so that's the marking section let's have a look at the hand plane tail I've added a few more pieces to this Okay, so very quickly, the plane till, I've just had another piece in, so we have the wooden block plane above my wooden hand plane, and I have the router plane in place. Again, that just has a little bevel on the inside, so it catches the two horns that are kind of on the back of the router, and it catches it underneath this mechanism as well. So that kind of sits on top, and they sit underneath, so they kind of wedge themselves in place, and can, just like that, and it just holds it in place. For the router plane, it's just two holes, nice and simple. And that just sits in there like that. And then I have my block plane just sitting up there for now. So that's that kind of done. So, and again, it's all finished, sanded, and ready to go. So now we're working on the drawers. Let's have a quick look at these. Okay, guys, on with the drawer construction. Now I have two of them just roughly assembled, like I said already. I haven't the rebates cut in that them yet, but I'm just getting all the dovetails done. So let's get on and I'll take you through a complete construction of one of these drawers. So the first thing we want to do is size our components. So I already have them rough cut and left into each one. Now, like I said, the grain pattern is continuous. So it's cut from a continuous piece of sapili. So I have them numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I also have an arrow on them so that I know, I know what side is the face and I know what way it needs to be orientated. So that's the first thing that we have to pay attention to. Now, the next thing that we have to look at is my side pieces. So they are made from ash. Now, 
the total height of my drawer is 100 millimeters, but I had a piece of ash board that was just over 200 millimeters, so I split it in half. Now, what that means is these sides are slightly less than 100 millimeters, only barely, it's only a small bit in it, so they're just a little bit lower than the front. So when lining up our dovetails, we have to ensure that we keep the bottom edge of our side to the bottom edge here when we're marking it out. That's only the one thing we have to pay attention to. I just did that because, like I say, rather than uh, milling up a whole other piece of ash just to get a side out of having them a couple of millimeters short on either side. It's actually, it's only about two millimeters either side. Um, it's better than wasting a whole other ash board when I can actually get two sides out of one ash board and they kind of slot in there with about a mil or two to spare. It's not a big deal. So first job we need to do is size our front and back of our drawer to meet the opening. So we want that good and snug in there. So let's get on and do that. We size this piece and we have to size our back piece. Okay, first job, very important. Let's get our components together and let's get them numbered up so that we keep track of everything. So that's my front, it's marked number three, arrow up. That's the orientation. So I'm gonna mark this joint number one, this number two. So one there, one there. So this one will be marked number one here and number two here so they know that they go together. And then we're gonna call this one number three. So three there, put a three on this piece. So I know they go together and number four will be here and we put a four here. Now I know the orientation, I know that the numbers stay out, so they're my face sides, and I know the numbers go to the top, so that's everything orientated there in one go. So we know when we're marking everything up, that's how our drawer goes together, and we can't make that mistake. So let's get these sized. Okay, first thing we wanna get a look at our drawer front, and we wanna match this exactly to the size of our opening and I want it to be a snug fit that we can plane down later to make sure that these drawers fit good and flush. So I'm gonna take a bit off this, always keeping the same edge, so that's my face edge against the fence on the shooting board, a razor sharp plane blade because we are planing end grain and once you keep that plane blade good and sharp you will have a no problem planing end grain. You can actually get lovely end grain shavings just like that. So let's take a few shavings and just keep checking as we go. A little bit more off that. Again. We always want to keep our face side against our fence. Let's keep checking. Now that's just about perfect. So that's a good snug fit there now. So I'm happy with that. So I want it to be nice and snug so that when the drawer is assembled and I'm playing down my dovetails later on, um, I have a little bit to work with before the drawer, drawer becomes too loose and we leave any gaps. So that's good and snug in there. I'm happy with that. Now let's fit the back piece. Okay, so same process with the back piece. Get that nice and snug so it sits in there like that. Now we have to shorten this, but I'll do that later on. Um, because our drawer bottom will slide in underneath that just like this. So you can see we have a gap in here. So our rebate will be just underneath this and our drawer bottom will slide straight in. So that's how we're constructing these drawers. So that's it, that's our two of them done. Now let's get marking on our dovetails. Okay, so I wanna set the depth of my dovetails. So they're gonna be sitting into that. This is my piece. So let's put that on a nice flat surface, drop my marking gauge beside it and drop my marking gauge to the top of the table, lock that down. And that puts the blade cutter just a little bit proud of the edge of your front piece, which means the front will sit a little bit proud of your dovetails so you can plane back to your dovetails. So that's how you do it. Now I know number one and number two are going to the front. So we're just gonna scribe a line all the way around. That will give us the correct depth and it'll give us a little bit that we can plane back to. I'll show you that now when it comes to finishing the drawer. Okay, nice sharp pencil. Now we have our marks here. You won't be able to see them on camera, but I have them marked out. So I really like these. You've seen me use these before, the Veritas dovetail markers. This is the one and six one. So we can square our edge across the top. There's our tails, our pin, edge of our next tail, edge of our next pin, and our half pins on the end. Just like that, you now, tail, 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 there's our pins in between. Now we can set 
um, or one and six ratio, which we have on the side of this. So it makes it very, very quick and easy to mark out these. Yeah, just like that. So there's our three dovetails for our front. Now I'm gonna mark out the other piece and we can get cutting. Okay, cutting the dovetails. Now, the only really thing to watch out for when you're cutting dovetails is that you keep your cut across the top of your tails dead square. The angle that you get in at doesn't matter as much, although you do wanna match your angle as close as you possibly can. But if you're only starting out and do cutting dovetails, um, make sure that your top cut is square. Get your angle as best you can. You will be marking your pins from the dovetails anyway. That's why you number your joints. So you match your tails to the specific pins and vice versa. So the main thing to concentrate, like I say, is making sure that you get that cut square across the top. Now, I like to use this um, extra little small workbench, my small hand -heel workbench, because it raises the work up to me. It's not the most natural sawing hanging and sawing like this. It's better to saw down here where you have your elbow in motion, but I like it up here because it allows me to be a little bit more accurate, even though it does making the sawing action a little bit more awkward. Uh, but that's just me, that's just how I like to do it. So, like I say, it allows me to be just that little bit more precise. Just get as close as you dare to your um, marking gauge line. I like to go right to the line now, but you can always stop. When you're starting out in dovetails, you can stop um, back from your marking gauge line a small bit and chisel to it. But eventually, you want to be able to take your saw cuts to the marking gauge line so that you're doing a far less chisel work. Just like that. Ultimately, you want to get good enough with your saw so that your joint is nearly fitting together just from the saw cuts alone. That's kind of where you want to end up. And uh, always keep your saw just to the outside of your marking gauge line. So you always want to be in your waist piece as well. So. There's our tails cut. Now we just want to get rid of the waist out of the middle of this. And uh, again, this is a kind of a case of get as close to your knifing mark line as you can. You don't want to spend all day chiseling. But if you're, if you're nervous or unsure, stay away from your marking gauge line and chisel up to it and just take your time. And we just want to cut off those half pins. Again, we want to really work to our shoulder line and keep this as clean and as square as possible. So stay just to the inside of it. Again, the better you are sawing, the closer you can get to this line and you can almost get it to the place where you can fit your joints together just from your saw cuts. If you have a good quality saw as well, it should give you a nice clean cut. But I like to stay just back just a touch. and then just clean it with the chisel, a nice little tap down, nice and handy. So just barely back from my marking gauge line. Just cut that out and then I can give that a small little chop with the chisel. I can put it right into the marking gauge line and just square that off. Okay, first thing I want to do is just clean up my shoulders. And like I said, I like to cut pretty close to that marking gauge line, but the more practice you get with the saw, the closer you can get to it. If you're a little bit unsure, just keep your saw cut away from the line and work up to it with your chisel. But I can drop right into my marking gauge line now. It is right there. I'm only removing, uh, I suppose, a bit of a half a millimeter or so of material, not even. maybe a quarter of a mil of material. That's it, done. So like I say, you wanna get practice as you can. Get a good quality saw. I, I'm using the Veritas saws now and I have to say I really like them. A good quality saw will give you a nice, clean, straight cut and uh, it gives you far less chisel work to have to do later on. So that's that one done. Let's do the other side. I 
Lovely. Okay, let's clean out the rest of our waste. Now, I'm just flying through this because I didn't intend this for this video to be like a how to do dovetails video or how to build drawers. I just want to give you a quick idea on what I'm doing. So again, nice, good, sharp chisels and work back to your shoulder line. You won't want to leave the tiniest little bite for the last bit before you drop into that marking gauge line. There we go, drop right into that now. And you can undercut slightly here into the joint just to make sure that you get a good snug fit. So work it about halfway and then work back from the other side. There we go, just make sure we get those corners nice and cleaned out. Lovely. One set of tails all wrapped up. I'll do the rest of them and then we can mark out our pins. Okay, now I'm marking out for my pins. Now, I have, like I said, I have these pieces all numbered. So this is number two. I have seen number two here. So I know that this is my top and this is my top. And because, like I said, my side pieces are cut are about a mil, about a mil and a half. So about a sixteenth of an inch um, shorter. I know that I have to keep these two sides perfectly flush because the top aren't flush. So I need to just make sure that I have my orientation correct, which is why I kept my numbers to the top and facing out so I know that both these pieces are orientated correctly. And then we can just mark out our pins. Now I like to use these really sharp blades on Matt Esley's marking knife. It's great for getting in here and it allows you to be really accurate and you can almost drop your saw into the curve of the marking knife line which is quite good. Make sure we are 100% there now. Now let's set the depth of our pins. Okay, I wanna set the depth of our pins, so that's how far our tails sit in to our pins. Now, normally what you would do is, you would just do exactly like I did before, mark this up, set the thickness of your piece, and scribe this around. But because I'm making a drawer component, normally what you would do is let the pins sit proud of the tails and then you can plane your giant flush, but we don't want to do that with our drawer component because we have sized this exactly to the front of our opening. So we can't take too much more off this. So what we'll do is actually let our tails sit proud of our pins only by a fraction and then we can plane down the sides of our drawers till we get an absolutely perfect fit. So it gives us a little bit to play with. So let the tails sit proud of the pins when you're making a drawer. So in order to set my depth, I'm just gonna take my marking gauge. I'm just gonna come back in just barely from the edge. Now we're only talking, you know, a quarter of a millimeter here. So I know what would that be, a 64th or a 32nd? I'm not too sure in Imperial, but it's a very small measurement anyway. Maybe a 64th of an inch is what we wanna come back. Something very, very small. And just lock that down. That will just allow, like I say, our tails to sit proud of our pins and the side of our drawers that we can then plane them down. So it's only the barest little bit. Then I can set the depth on this. So we're only scribing the front and the back, not the side, because we're not cutting off the sides of this. So there we go. I'll do the same then on this side and that will give me the depth of my pins. Now, I'll get on and mark the rest of this out. Okay, very quickly, cutting out for our pins then, like I said, we wanna stay inside in the waist of this so we don't end up with a gap in our dovetail joint. So keep just to the waist side of your line and we wanna keep our cuts square down the way. Um, we wanna keep the sides of these pins nice and square. So we just wanna concentrate and make sure that we have these correct. <laughs> Just get them nice and square and stay on the waist side of your line. And hopefully then we don't have too much chisel work to do. Now 
There we go, just like that. And again, the closer you can get to your line with your fret saw, the uh, less work you have to do with the chisel. Now, this one is a good bit off, so it's a good bit of chisel work to do. But the better you get at doing these dovetails, the more practice you get with your saw, the less chisel work you'll have to do. And eventually, you'll almost get to the point that we're using, without using any chisels, your joint will just go together. Um, so a little bit of chisel work to do on this. I'll get on and do that now, we get this joint fit together. Okay guys, same thing for knocking out for your pins. Again, work down to your uh, knife line, to your marking gauge line, and then you can just undercut the joint ever so slightly, working from both sides. And again, the closer you get with your saw cut, the less chisel work you have to do. So let's get these two joints together. We want a good snug fit, just like that. and tap them home. Now be careful with Sapili. Sapili can snap. So you really, if it's, if it's too tight, don't force it too much. Now our bottom is nice and flush and our tails are just slightly proud of our side. So now we can work that down with the plane and get a nice flush fit. So normally, like I said, what you do is you'd leave your pins sit proud, but because we've matched this piece exactly to our drawer front, we want to leave our tail sit proud and flush these guys off. So there we go. I'm gonna get on now and uh, finish up the rest of the dovetails on this joint. It's the exact same process again, and I'll talk you through what we're doing for the back. Okay guys, now that I have the front dovetails cut, I wanna get on and cut the back dovetails. I'll do that off camera because it's the exact same process, but I just wanna to explain to you about marking out for our back dovetails. So I have two dovetails on the back and three on the front, and the back of our drawer is shorter than the sides of our drawer because the base will slide into a rebate underneath the back of our drawer like that, if that makes sense hopefully it does it will when you see me constructing the drawer at the end of this anyway so we want to size this component so what I'm going to do now is mark our rebate so I'm going to be using a six mil piece of um, MDF for the base of our drawer so I have a six mil cutter here so I'm going to mark uh, where the rebate needs to go now because we have true dovetails coming out to the front of our drawer we have to hide that rebate inside in the bottom dovetail but we can't bring the rebate all the way out to the front otherwise you will see it in the front if this was half blind or half lapped dovetails you could take that rebate all the way out to the front you either run it through with your plow plane or over your um, router table and you don't have to worry but because we have our dovetails exposed we can't take the rebate all the way out to the edge because we'll see a little gap in our dovetail so we just want to mark that so i already have this one marked i'm just going to set my marking gauge to this line here keep them all the same there we go that's sitting in it now like that tighten that up now i want to make sure that we're marking the bottom inside of our drawer so when i pull this line I want to ensure that that's, that's the bottom of my rebate. I want to ensure that that's inside in this dovetail. It cannot be in here, otherwise again, you're going to see it. So it has to be hidden within the dovetails. I'm just going to pull that. And that is the bottom part of my rebate, which I shall line up with my cutter in my plow plane. So do the same on this component, which I have marked already the bottom and the bottom of the inside of the front of the drawer. Now the front of the drawer, we can continue to rebate edge to edge. It doesn't matter. It's not going to be seen. It's going to be hidden in the back part of this. So again, pull a line there. Then for our back component, like this will all make perfect sense now when I um, assemble it. Again, I'm just kind of speeding through this because I'm conscious of the video getting quite long, but let's go through the drawer assembly. So we have this marked three and four. So I know this is my top. So I can pull a line here. Now that's the bottom or that's, a, that's the bottom of my rebate. I need this drawer to be above the top of the rebate. So I can just take my six mil cutter, line that up with that marking gauge line. I can see exactly where that needs to be. Then, then I can reset my marking gauge to be the bottom of that rebate plus six millimeters, which puts me to the top of the rebate. Then I scribe a line there like that. Now I can cut this piece to that marking gauge line and that will be above the piece that I need to slot in. Hopefully that makes sense. It will when I assemble the drawer. Like I said, I'm rushing through this now because the video could get quite long and it's not a dedicated how to make a drawer or how to do dovetails video. So I'll get on and cut this. I'm gonna cut those dovetails and then we'll assemble the drawer and you'll see exactly what I mean. Okay guys, there we go. There's the back of our drawer. Now, so I have the dovetails cut in both sides. They're ready to go. So you can see the gap I have in the bottom now. That's above my rebate and that will allow my piece to slot in underneath. Now, I've also offset the dovetails slightly to this direction, so I measured in 10 millimeters to this pin, so just under half an inch, 
and it's six millimeters or five millimeters, sorry, to this pin. So just under a quarter of an inch because I wanted more on this side because I'm going to put a chamfer on the top of my drawer to help it slide in that little bit easier. So I wanted a bit more of a shoulder on this side. So that's 10 mil to this pin and it is five mil to this pin. So the dovetails, like I said, are offset slightly down the way. So two on the back and three on the front. Now, we need to cut in our rebate for our drawer bottom. Let's get on to that with the plow plane. Okay guys, we're on to cutting the rebate in the bottom of our drawer. So I have my plow plane set up, just mark, let the blade into where my marking gauge line was. And you start from the end and work your way back. That way you have a groove always to work into. Now, like I said, the thing we have to worry about is our dovetail. We can't continue the whole way through this because we'll see it. So five millimeters into my dovetail, I've just knocked a line with my quarter inch or six mil chisel. This is a six mil rebate, so it's gonna stop there. So I'm gonna stop my plow plane there and then I'll have to square off this with the chisel. So let's get this rebate finished. So we just wanna take some care when we get to this end. Make sure we keep that fence pressed in and we can run into it, our uh, rebate. Lovely. Okay, so there we go. That's our rebate cut all the way out into our dovetail. Now, this part will be hidden in the joint, so if it's not too clean, don't worry about it. So that's where the bottom of our drawer is going to fit in now and into our dovetail. So I have the other ones to cut now, so I'll get on and do that. Okay, guys, so I have those three drawers now glued up and just letting them set up. Um, didn't turn out too bad. So you can see there's the gap in the back. There's our rebate all the way around. So that's the drawer construction, nice and simple. Two dovetails to the back, three to the front. Cut a rebate all the way around so that we can slot in the base of our drawer. So I'm gonna let the three of them now set up there. Then we will do the final fit and finish on them. So we have to plane down our tails, plane down our sides. This one is fitting quite nicely. This one needs a small bit of adjustment and so does this one. So I'm gonna get on and do the rest of these now while these ones are setting up. I'll see how far I get. And uh, we might finish these three and then stop the video there. But we'll see how far we get, let's rock on. Okay guys, glue on our drawers has set up now. So we're just gonna fit them. This one is almost perfect. This one I think is good to go. So we just wanna flush off the um, dovetails on this one. Do a bit of planing on the front of this one as well. So we just have a bare little bit just to take off this. And I think we should be good to go. This one needs a little bit of work. It's a little bit on the wide side. So uh, let's just take a little bit off the top of this. You go on the shooting board. Perfect. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that, nice and loose. We don't want it too tight. We can put little stops in there as well afterwards. So this guy, he's just a little bit snug. Just give that one a little touch as well. That's a nice fit too. So we're happy with that. Okay, now we need to address this one. It's a little bit on the thick side, so we have a good bit of planning to do on this. So let's get that done. Okay, this one I just clamped in the vise and I'm gonna work from the edge in because we don't want to blow out any of our tails or our pins. that okay so I'm happy with how they are fitting all three of those so now what we need to do is uh, just plane down the fronts of these now I have to get this one back out <laughs> make sure they don't go in so we can't pull them out again okay Stick those two. Oh dear there we go okay <laughs> okay guys so I'm just fixing the front of this. I want to flush down my tails and my pins. Now, Supili can be notorious for getting tear out because um, the grain can move in different directions. And no matter what way you play into at times, it can uh, give you tear out. So I'm just going to go diagonally across it. 
again, a good sharp blade is the way to go. I'm going to work from both sides in, just because I don't want to blow out my end grain. A little bit of tear along the bottom there. And that's continuing to tear out, so I'm going to leave that alone. But a good sharp blade and there's no problem whatsoever cleaning end grain. As you can see there. Lovely. Now, I'm going to do that to the rest of them and uh, we'll jump back in. Okay guys, there's our drawer, more or less finished. It's sanded up now. I just put a chamfer on the back of it just to make it easier. When you pull these drawers out, which I will, just for letting it in again nice and easy you can just tilt it in and push it in so it's just to aid the drawer going in and out that's why i left the top pin slightly thicker than the bottom one so i could just put that chamfer in it now there's a piece of six mil mdf I'm just going to slot that in the base just like so tap that home you can put a screw in the back of that then right there to hold it and that is our drawer complete. So let's get a finish on the three of these now and we shall end this video here. We'll have a quick look. Okay guys, there we go. We have three drawers done. I have a little stop in place. So I just drilled in a little piece of MDF right here just as a stop. Again, we have a chamfer back so we can tilt them in place and just push them in. I just drilled a 25 mil hole, like a little board hole for all the world, a little finger pull, just for pulling them in and out because I'm not going to put any uh, handles or knobs on these because I want them to be flush from when I close the cabinet door. So there you go, that's three of them done. Now I have another four of these to go. I'm taking a lot longer than I had anticipated, but I'm doing them all by hand and it's a great excuse to get some practice. So there you go, guys. A little bit of finish on them. Um, the ash doesn't stand out. It's not as pronounced as I hoped it would be. I put some Danish oil on it. Maybe some maple might have been better, but you know, you can still see the dovetails to the front. So it's still a nice effect. And we still have a nice set of dovetails on the side at the back as well. So yeah, not too bad. They're fitting in there quite nicely now. So I'm pretty happy with that. A little bit of tear out on the front of the Sapili, but uh, you know, it's, it's shop furniture at the end of the day. And like I say, it's, an, it's just an excuse for me to practice my hand cut dovetails. And they're getting better slowly but surely. Okay guys, we're going to leave it there for this part of the hand tool cabinet build. So when you come back, I will have the rest of these drawers in and finished. So in the next episode, we're going to add some more hardwood accents to this. We have a nice pelmet to make here, some lights to put in and some front doors to make. So if you have to decide, maybe some shaker style doors with some sapili, we might do that for the next episode. Hopefully you've enjoyed it guys. Hopefully you're getting something out of this build. Hopefully it's giving you some inspiration as always. Comments and questions below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, share the video. If you want to support what I do, here and um, all the links to all the resources will be in the description below thanks to everybody on patreon for all your support i really appreciate it guys and uh, links to all my tools and all that kind of stuff is in the description as always and anything you want to know just leave a comment below i try to get back to everybody if i can and if you're wondering about my lip i burnt myself with a very very hot cup of coffee um the other morning and that's why this is like this it's not tomato sauce or chocolate or anything else so there we go that's it guys for now like i said i'm going to get out of here that was a long day i thought i'd have the rest of them done but not for this video but they will be done for the next video so take it easy